Hey everybody, Chris Pearson here with another episode of Nebulosity. It is June 2021 and we are getting ready to hit the road. I'm actually heading back for the first time in almost a year and a half to my hometown of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, and I'll be staying with a buddy of mine in Suffolk, which is out on the, the sort of uh, western side of the region of Southern Virginia, also known as Tidewater or the 757. Now, there's still a bit of light pollution down there for sure, but a lot less than the DC region. So I've got a, a bit of, uh, of gear here in the background. You can see I've got the, the cradle, this uh, Orion XT10G mount. I also have my Vanguard case here with all of all kinds of doohickeys and gizmos in terms of lenses, my Sigma, my, my Rokinon lenses, etc. I've got the tripods, the German equatorial mounts and everything. So I'm gonna have a whole setup uh, in just uh, well, a couple of hours really. It's not that long of a drive, about three hours south of here. And I'll have out, you know, visual astronomy, astrophotography setups, and try to do some landscape as well if I can. So anyway, wish me luck. Uh, I'll definitely do some extra videos when I'm down there and um, you know, hopefully the drive is uh, smooth. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Hey everybody, we are no longer in the neighborhood. As you can see behind me, uh, the beautiful Nansman River. I'm in Suffolk, Virginia, in the Tidewater region, 757 or otherwise known as Hampton Roads. This is my home region and I am so happy to be back, especially a year and a half after COVID. It's wonderful to be able to come and spend time with friends and family. So I'm at a buddy of mine's house here on the river and you can see it's just an absolutely exquisite background. It's great for wildlife, if you like bird watching, or if you're into stargazing. The border class skies out here are anywhere from four to six, and I'm right in the middle at about five, 5.5. So I brought with me my, my portable setup. I've got the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro, and I also have my Red Cat 51 and the ASI 2600 MC Pro One Shot Color Camera. I've got the Optolong L Extreme narrowband filter in there to isolate hydrogen and oxygen gas uh, because we are going after some of the first nebula this 2021 season. We're going after the Butterfly Nebula as well as the North American Nebula C20. So these are both, you know, gettable objects. And the thing is, because of the weather in the south, you get a lot of moisture. There are a ton of clouds. So you're constantly dipping and dodging clouds in the evening and in the morning. And uh, the last couple of nights have been really, really challenging, but I think I'm gonna get somewhere between an hour to two hours on each object. And the point of this, I think, episode, aside from just showcasing the natural beauty of my region, is the fact that, you know, in darker skies, you do get better data, right? And I'm normally shooting from that huge light dome that is Washington, D.C. And the question is, with a couple of hours of data, maybe one to two hours on some of these objects with the same setup, what is the difference between that and one to two hours of data from my light polluted skies? So when I get back home, I'm definitely gonna shoot these same objects, try to get the same number of exposures and do a little bit of a cross comparison and let's see what comes of it. Hope you guys as always are having good luck in your projects and uh, stay tuned for the end of the video. We'll do a quick reveal. And again, as always, take care.
that pretty much does it for this episode. Thanks for sticking around and hopefully you enjoyed that brief and oh, not so scientific cross comparison between Portal Class 5, 6 guys and Portal Class 9. Same objects, same tech, uh, same hardware, same conditions really. The only difference was back home, uh, there was about a 10% additional moon glow, uh, went from sort of 5% to I guess 15% between shoots, but not a whole lot of difference. And you know, the Optolong L Extreme filter does help a heck of a lot in terms of getting rid of the gradients. But at the end of the day, when you live under a light dome, you live under a light dome. All that means is that you collect a bit more data, you have to do some gradient removal and post-process editing, but you're still able to cre create some beautiful images as you can see in my channel and, and on my Instagram account. So speaking of Instagram uh, and Twitter, feel free to follow me again at CP underscore nebulosity. Uh, if you want to capture, uh, if you want to catch some additional images that I took along the journey for this trip, as well as just general updates uh, as I go along. Look, at the end of the day, uh, this hobby is, it's an art, uh, it's part science, and it's just a lot of fun. So again, these videos are really to, to showcase what's possible, to get you guys excited about it, hopefully get you motivated to get out there, get a telescope and look up at the night sky. Until we see you next time you hit the neighborhood, clear skies. <laughs>